All right, now that we've got some experience algebraically manipulating simpler and slightly more complex expressions, let's try this set of illustrated example problems on for size. Be warned, some of these might be tough. Struggle with them though, don't tap out too quick. For the purposes of this lecture, don't necessarily concern yourself too much with the concept these equations represent right now, but rather concentrate today on the process of algebraic manipulation. We'll explore these phenomena in greater detail in later lectures. Remember, your goal is to isolate the unknowns on one side of the equation and the knowns on the other. The quality must be maintained. Don't jam pieces together that don't fit. Any operation you perform on one side of the equation must be performed on the other. Given mechanical power equals t times n divided by 9.55, the first problem is asking us to solve for t in terms of mechanical power and n. And the second problem is asking us to solve for n in terms of mechanical power and t. The third problem is asking us to solve for unknown quantity n2 in terms of known properties t1, t2, and n1. And the fourth problem is asking us to solve for unknown property n1 in terms of known properties n2, t2, and t1. Now don't freak out about these subscripts. t1 is simply a means of differentiating it from t2. These are not mathematical operators. They're simply subscripts designed to identify certain properties. Given efficiency equals power out over power in, the fifth problem is asking us to solve for unknown property p out in terms of known properties p in and efficiency. And the sixth problem is asking us to solve for unknown property p in in terms of known properties p out and efficiency. Given x sub l equals 2 pi times f times l, the seventh problem is asking us to solve for unknown property l in terms of known properties f and x sub l. Given x sub c equals 1 divided by 2 pi f times c, problem 8 is asking us to solve for unknown property c given known properties f and x sub c. Lastly, given a circle with area of pi times r squared and the fact that diameter is 2 times the radius, problem 9 is asking us to solve for area in terms of diameter. And problem 10 is asking the reverse, solve for diameter in terms of area. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Our first problem features the rotating mechanical power formula, which states rotating mechanical power is equal to torque, T, times rotational speed, N, divided by 9.55. We're being asked to solve for unknown torque, given known mechanical power and known speed. Unknown property, T, is being multiplied by N and divided by 9.55. Multiply both sides by 9.55. 9.55 cancels out on the right, divide both sides by N, N cancels out on the right, and we're left with t equals 9.55 times mechanical power divided by n. Our second problem is asking us to solve for unknown property n, given known t and mechanical power values. Multiply both sides by 9.55. 9.55 cancels out on the right. Divide both sides by t. t cancels out on the right. And we're left with n equals 9.55 times mechanical power divided by t. Our second problem involves gear ratios, where the number of teeth on gear 1 divided by the number of teeth on gear 2 is equal to the rotational speed of gear 2 divided by the rotational speed of gear 1. We're being asked to solve for unknown property N2 given known properties N1, T2, and T1. Given T1 over T2 equals N2 over N1, multiply both sides by N1, where N1 cancels out on the right, where we're left with unknown property N2 equal to N1 times T1 over T2. Our next problem is asking us to solve for unknown property N1, given known properties N2, T2, and T1. Again, given T1 over T2 equals N2 over N1, one may initiate this algebraic manipulation by inverting both sides. Multiply both sides by N2, N2 cancels out on the right, and we're left with N1 equals N2 times T2 divided by T1. Our next problem deals with the ratio of efficiency, or efficiency is equal to the power out, P out, divided by the power in, p in. It's perhaps easiest to set this up in a triangle format. We're first being asked to solve for unknown property p out given known properties p in and an efficiency. Solve for p out by covering up p out. p out is equal to p in times efficiency because efficiency is side by side with p in. The next problem asks us to solve for p in given known properties p out and efficiency. Cover up p in. p in is equal to p out over efficiency because B out is over efficiency. Our next problem demonstrates that X sub L is equal to 2 pi times F times L. 
we're being asked to solve for unknown property L in terms of the known properties F and X sub L. Again, don't freak out by the subscript. L is not a mathematical operator. It's simply a means of identifying property X. X sub L equals 2 pi times F times L. Unknown property L is being multiplied by 2 pi F. Divide both sides by 2 pi F. You can do this all at once or one at a time. 2 pi F cancels out on the right-hand side, and we're left with L equals X sub L divided by 2 pi F. Given X sub C is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi F C, we're being asked to solve for unknown property C in terms of known properties F and X sub C. Given X sub C equals 1 over 2 pi F C, perhaps the easiest way to start is to invert both sides such that 1 over x sub c equals 2 pi f c. Unknown property c is being multiplied by 2 pi f. Dividing both sides by 2 pi f, we're left with a rather ugly fraction, 1 over x sub c divided by 2 pi f on the left-hand side. It's important to remember, division is equal to multiplication times the inverse. What's the inverse of 2 pi f? The inverse is 1 over 2 pi f. So 1 over x sub c divided by 2 pi f is equivalent to 1 over x sub c times 1 divided by 2 pi f. 2 pi f cancels out on the far right hand side such that unknown property c is equal to 1 over 2 pi f times x sub c. Our next problem demonstrates that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. Additionally, what we're aware is diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. We're being asked to solve for unknown property a in terms of known property D. With very little effort, it can be demonstrated radius is half of diameter. So R equals D divided by 2. Now given our area expression, where area of a circle is equal to pi times radius squared, we can substitute D over 2 in for R, which yields area equals pi times D divided by 2 squared. Note the parentheses. D divided by 2 times D divided by 2 is d squared divided by 4, which some mathematical purists will rearrange since the constants appear together, such that area equals pi over 4 times d squared. Lastly, we're being asked to solve for unknown property d, given known property a. Given we previously demonstrated that a equals pi over 4 times d squared, multiply both sides by 4. 4 cancels out on the right. Divide both sides by pi. Pi cancels out on the right leaving us d squared equals 4 times area divided by pi. This is not the answer we're looking for. This is solved for d squared. We need to solve for property d. Take the square root of both sides, which yields d equals square root 4 times area divided by pi, which some mathematical purists may take the square root of 4 and write this as 2 times the square root of area divided by pi. All right, that might have been a little tough for some of you. Again, keep in mind this general guidance about algebraic manipulation. Isolate unknowns on one side of the equation and all the knowns on the other. Follow the rules when doing so. Equality must be maintained at all times. Any operation performed on one side must also be performed on the other. Lastly, don't forget what you're solving for. Too often I've observed individuals struggling with this topic perform some operation one step only to undo it in the next. By annotating each step of the manipulation process, you could backtrack and correct any mistakes you may have made. Before we bring this lecture to a close, let me answer a burning question that might have been in the back of your mind since you first learned algebraic manipulation way back in grade school. That question being, why are we doing this? This deserves an answer because the larger purpose may not be readily apparent so early in this lecture series. Your math teacher's goal in high school really was to frustrate and humiliate you. My purpose in reviewing algebraic manipulation is because it's used on a very frequent basis. Given an accepted relationship between certain properties and known values, one can solve for unknown properties. A simple example. Calculations can take the place of equipment. Given 4 volts across a 680 ohm resistor, what's the current through it? Given Ohm's law demonstrates that I equals V over R, 4 volts divided by 680 ohms yields roughly 5.9 milliamperes. If you know voltage and resistance, you don't have to use an ammeter to measure current. You can calculate it. A slightly more complicated example. Will the part work? Oftentimes, rated mechanical power and rated speed appear on a motor nameplate, 
but rated torque is unlisted. Does a 200 watt motor operating at 1720 RPM have enough torque to do the job? Given mechanical power is equal to torque times rotational speed divided by 9.55, we demonstrated via algebraic manipulation that torque equals mechanical power times 9.55 divided by rotational speed. Substituting in 200 watts and 1720 RPM demonstrates this motor is capable of producing roughly 1.1 newton meters of torque at the rated condition. Does the job require 1.1 newton meters of torque or less? It should be good. Does the job require more than 1.1 newton meters of torque? Go get a bigger motor. Here's yet another example. What part do I need? Let's say we need to find which capacitance value will provide 500 ohms of impedance at 60 hertz frequency. The capacitive impedance magnitude equals 1 over 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance value. We demonstrated via algebraic manipulation that C equals 1 over 2 pi times F times X sub C. Substituting in the known values for X sub C in frequency demonstrates that roughly 5.3 microfarad capacitor should do the trick. We'll examine many practical applications like this and more as we progress further into the electrical circuit analysis series. In conclusion, the section presented a review of algebraic manipulation. We learned algebraic manipulation is the process of rearranging an expression such that all unknown properties are on one side of an equal sign and all the known properties are on the other, all the while maintaining quality. Remember to review this material as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.